Let us start uh, lecture 25, uh, the course is corrosion failures and analysis. And uh, we will continue our discussion on crevice corrosion. And if you recall our last lecture, um, we have uh, in general discussed that where you do experience crevice corrosion. In fact, wherever you have a formation of slit, a thin slit where you can the, the electrolyte can get access to it and uh, which is uh, uh, not visible to naked eyes. So, that particular part is basically the uh, region where crevice corrosion starts and then of course, from there it grows. Now, that slit can be metal, 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 non metal, metal deposits, metal uh, uh, a kind of dirt okay, or uh, metal or and uh, non metal objects falling on a metal surface anything which can create a slit or thin crevice we call it crevice. Now, at the same time we have given lot of examples uh, the photographs and looking at how the crevice corrosion initiates and uh, uh, how it grows. Okay. We have given the example of door the side of the door where you have uh, sheet metal is actually bent over there to make a thin thick sheet thick thick portion of there uh, at the at the edge of the door and there crevice corrosion starts and even in fact in fact we have seen an example of lock whether it's a, a excellent lock highly corrosion resistant lock doesn't matter which company it is made of uh, which company has made it uh, if there is a crevice and if there is a possibility of water uh, accumulation which acts as electrolyte, we can experience uh, crevice corrosion. So, that is what if you had noticed that keyhole of the lock the stainless steel lock uh, actually it it, it it had crevice corrosion okay, because uh, around that uh, keyhole portion uh, the corrosion was very prominent. Even we have seen that road side uh, uh, ribbed uh, rebar reinforced bar uh, around that rib portion the foot of that rib portion actually uh, does have a uh, little bit of extra rust or, or red rust that is crevice. And we started discussing about different factors. Okay. For example, we talked about passivation the metal which is passivate which can passivate easily that metal crevice corrosion can be very aggressive if the passivation layer destroys. Uh, okay. So, then the rest of the part would act as a huge cathode at the small section where the passivation part is destroyed we get a very rapid rate of crevice corrosion growth. Now, uh, then there could be possibility of uh, formation of deaerated cell in fact, crevice corrosion starts with the deaeration. Okay. In general, the, the mechanism as we go ahead with the mechanism, you would say that it is actually a galvanic mode of corrosion, but it is very localized. In case of galvanic corrosion, still it is a localized corrosion, but still for example, let us say anode area and cathode area, they are of equal uh, area, still you will experience galvanic corrosion, but that galvanic corrosion effect will not be that severe, provided the condition is not like a small anode and large cathode, but in this crevice corrosion case you would notice that actually it generates the situation it creates the situation that the anode area would be extremely small and cathode area would be extremely large and that lead to a favorable condition for extreme galvanic localized corrosion. Okay. And then there are other factors, so that means one factor is uh, of course, uh, 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 passivation passivation and once we talk about passivation definitely it brings in alloy composition. Alloy composition for example, normal mild steel it is not passivating type of metal, but once you add chromium 
uh, around 12 percent, more than 12 percent, 18 percent generally in 3 to the 4, it becomes highly passivating. Okay. So, that is what alloy composition becomes important. Then uh, of course, uh, we have oxygen level in the solution. As we have seen that we have explained that if we heat the water or the electrolyte, oxygen level drops and that would lead to a situation where Krebis corrosion may not grow as fast as the situation where oxygen level in the solution uh, in, the, in the beginning of the process is very high. So, that is what oxygen level becomes very important. Then third is uh, halides, uh, chlorine, bromine, this kind of halides, if they are present, we would see that the Krebis corrosion becomes very aggressive. Now, uh, fourth is geometry of geometry of crevice. This is very tricky, uh, very critical, extremely critical part. For example, uh, we have a crevice, let us say this is a small crevice, let us say this is the crevice. Okay. Another crevice is this much, let us say this is the crevice and they are, they are the, if, we, if we consider their magnification level, uh, they are of naked eye the naked eye. So, that means, this area is much larger than this area. So, this is let us say B case, this is A case and interestingly, the A case would have higher crevice tendency rather than B case. The major important factor is the crevice should be as small as possible, but at the same time it should be as large as possible also. So, now let us understand this, this should be of dimension which would allow electrolyte electrolyte to enter or rather to enter into the crevice and this is one and second part this should be of that dimension that means it should be large enough which will allow electrolyte to go into the crevice and this should be small enough or thin enough to allow the electrolyte to be stagnant. In fact, let me just put this particular thing as capital. So, this is extremely important. So, it should allow that crevice should allow sufficient electrolyte to seep in at the same time it should be stagnant. That means, if it is a large cave, see this opening is a large large wide opening then of course, if there is a ripple in the electrolyte then electrolyte. So, in this electrolyte and the outside electrolyte. So, this electrolyte and this electrolyte they can get mixed up. Okay. But in this case, since it is a small opening, electrolyte can enter, but at the same time even if there is a ripple in the system in the water, this particular water which has gone in or electrolyte that has gone in will not have any chance to go out and get mixed. So, that means unmixed condition, unmixed condition, unmixed condition means bulk electrolyte and crevice electrolyte. So, they should not mix, no mixing and that is only possible if it is stagnant. Okay. So, this of course, there could be migration, uh, ion migration, but that ion migration would be much sluggish compared to the situation where the crevice uh, orifice is much larger. So, that time there could be a convection of liquid or fluid. Okay. So, that is that is avoided, that should be avoided in order to have a crevice kind of attack. Now, this is another factor. Now, uh, of course, uh, then uh, 5 if you consider then bulk composition of the media, bulk composition of the media in the sense I think uh, we should not have that particular same thing separately. This constitutes the bulk constituents 
composition bulk composition fine now that that could be acidic it could be acidic in the beginning it could be neutral or it could be basic interestingly even thing will be neutral would come to see that within the crevice it becomes highly acidic so we'll see that when we go into uh, the mechanism part of it of course the mass transport in fact geometry of crevice it talks about mass transport in the form of convection and the second part is migration migration of ions or you can say diffusion of ions diffusion of ions okay so that means these are the factors which can lead to crevice mode of corrosion then lastly uh, we can say that uh, type of crevice type of crevice means it can have metal metal for example washer metallic washer used for during tightening of a bolt or it could be non metallic non metallic washer and metal during tightening of a bolt or it could be metal or and deposits you can say clay clay deposit okay so that could also lead to a problem for example in this case one can also think of a kind of plastic bolt falling at the bottom of a water tank made up mild steel so that could also lead to a crevice okay and of course there could be situation like uh, uh, this is metal metal when we are talking about two different metals two different metals for example washer and uh, uh, bolt they could have different compositions but there could be possibility of metal itself due to design create crevice one classic example that what i showed you uh, last class was basically a ripple uh, rebar so ripple rebar is basically like this fine so this is the ripple rebar fine so now this is the foot of the foot of that particular uh, a ripple or rid, uh, this called ribbed okay so this particular part is creating a tiny crevice so here you have don't have any different metals it's a cell design factor is actually creating such kind of uh, crevice for example design part creating crevice another part example let me show you one design let's say you have a water tank so this is a water tank let's say this is inlet this is outlet okay now there could be possibility that this pipe has gone inside okay so there is a small pipe which is entering into it here also there could be possibility that this pipe has entered into the tank and let's say those pipe compositions and the tank composition metal composition both are same so no galvanic corrosion but here it, it is interesting there are a lot of crevice portion for example let me just pinpoint those crevice part okay so this is a crevice this is a crevice wherever that particular sharp edge is forming between that pipe entering into the tank and the tank wall here is a crevice here is a crevice in fact this corner is a crevice this is a crevice so in fact uh, it should not look at outside so this is a crevice in fact if you see this this is another crevice here another crevice is forming okay so those are the crevice parts and these parts are forming because you have not made any different metal contacts or different metal making a crevice rather the same metal is creating for example this particular bottom of the tank this is a crevice okay so this crevice is formed 
just by because of the design. So, the only by changing design one can change this crevice part. So, let us make this particular design modification we can avoid crevice. So, only concern is how to avoid crevice. So, in order to make that you make a design like this. instead of giving sharp corners, we are giving a curvature or radius root radius and that would allow not to have crevice. So, now the crevice is out, crevice is out because we are creating a situation similar to this. Now, in this case we are creating in this case it was thin enough to allow water to go in at the same time it is it is large enough to allow the water to go in and it is thin enough at that local portion to allow that water to become stagnant. But now once we have this all the time there will be flow and that flow would not allow the crevice corrosion to take place. We will talk about how crevice happens the mechanism part, but at least if you somehow without knowing crevice part at least if you can avoid crevice the sharp corner the problem is resolved to a great extent. Now here there is one more problem, so the, now the crevice is out crevice resolved with this design, but there is a problem. If for example, if let us say there is a uh, there is a need for a regular cleaning of that particular tank, generally at the tank bottom we have deposits, deposits. So, that deposit need to be taken out time to time scrapped off. In order to do that, you have to take the water out. If it is a small tank, no problem. If it is a large tank, it is not easy to tilt this tank. It is a small tank, tilt it fine, absolutely fine, all the water can be taken out. But if it is a large tank, it is impossible to tilt it. So, that time you just open the tap over here, water and this one you closed, okay. this one you closed and so then once you close this water inlet, outlet you just open, all the water would go out. But still, you will see that the small amount of water up to the edge will be there and that water at the same time cleaning also becomes difficult in the sense that somebody has to go in and then clean everything. You cannot use any mechanical stuff even if you want to use mechanical stuff still there will be a possibility of water logging. Otherwise you have to wait for a long duration to let the water evaporate and since for a large tank this water could be a huge amount even that re residue water. So, the best design in this case could be just to avoid that water logging half during uh, maintenance part or cleaning part one can have a design like this. Instead of having uh, water outlet uh, from the outside, we can have water live outlet from the bottom. Okay. So, now we make such design. If you want to clean it off what you do you just close this part, open this part and you also create a little bit of churning entire uh, deposits whatever they will go out. But in fact, here the deposit formation would be much less in this design deposit formation would be much less compared to this, because deposit whatever comes down there could be a kind of motion that motion would take the deposit along with the water. Of course, you have to take care of the clogging of this particular thing time to time, but otherwise the tank deposit problem can be resolved to a great extent. So, this could be a better design than this. Okay. So, this is the bad design, this is better within this framework it is the best. Fine. So, like that way without knowing the nitty gritties of crevice, but just by avoiding crevice one can resolve the crevice corrosion. Fine. So, this is the type of crevice at the same time I would say uh, uh, different out of different types there is one more factor which is very important the design related crevice formation that is very important. For example, sometimes the pipe if it is a cast pipe the problem becomes very prevalent. For example, in case of cast pipe sometimes so there could be a sort of uh, uh, extra metal object which is going or outside there could be extra metal 
which is coming out. So, it is not the wall is not smooth here also a crevice formation crevice. So, this is also a kind of casting defect kind of crevice. So, one has to smoothen it off, smoothen it off okay. so then only the crevice part can be avoided. Okay. So, those are the uh, different factors associated with the crevice. Here the factors if you see some are of course, from the point of mechanism some are mostly they are of the point from the point of the appearance of crevice. Okay. So, let us get to uh, the mechanism part of it. Okay. So, if we want to uh, see a mechanism part mechanism part in the mechanism part one can uh, look at this way for example let us make a crevice so let's say this is a crevice now let's say uh, this is the level of water let's say let's say uh, it's exposed to the open air open air and that open air, al uh, air allows oxygen to come in okay now, initially everywhere we had a similar oxygen level. Now, let us say this is iron now and there are chlorine ion also let us say this is sea water or if we do lab scale experiment 3.5 per weight percent in SEL. Okay. So, now there are sufficient chloride ion. Okay. Now, there would be possibility since it is a everywhere cathodic and anodic reactions can take place and here cathodic reaction is because we have lot of oxygen and this is open air and this is neutral, neutral media fine. The neutral media you react with 2 H 2 O plus 4 E it forms 4 O H minus. Now, everywhere everywhere you have the formation of reaction of this. So, let us say this is C. So, I just put C. C means cathodic. C cathodic reaction is taking place. C is cathodic. Fine. Now, of course, uh, initial to begin with the everywhere we have anodic reaction. So, anodic reaction would be So, this is anodic let us say A anodic. So, now there would be there would be anodic reactions. Okay. So, now these are the anodic reactions. So, like that way everywhere initially we have same both the reactions taking place. Now, since this crevice part crevice part we have two conditions one is large enough to let the electrolyte or corrosive here the corrosive I would say corrosive is nothing but the electrolyte to enter enter the crevice. Second condition thin enough to let the crevice liquid stagnant. Okay, to let the crevice liquid stagnant. Okay. So, these are the two conditions. So, now in the beginning everywhere you have oxygen uh, a cathodic reaction oxygen reduction and iron uh, oxidation, but now after some time within this crevice within this crevice we will have a situation like oxygen is depleted. In order to have that oxygen to maintain the balance with the bulk one, one has to have a very good convection movement of fluid, but since it is a stagnant convection is not allowed 
Of course, there could be possibility of diffusion of oxygen, but the diffusion, the rate of diffusion is lower or slower than the rate at which the cathodic reaction should occur to maintain the electron requirement for cathodic reaction. Okay. What do I say? The oxygen diffusion is possible, this stagnant convection is not possible, oxygen cannot go in by a convection route from the bulk to the crevice, but oxygen diffusion is possible. So, that diffusion rate rather the rate of diffusion or flux j okay, which is if I consider the uh, steady state diffusion minus d dc dx. So, this j which is the flux and moles or moles of oxygen per unit area per unit time. So, that is much lower than the rate at which electron generation required to meet oxygen reduction at other area than crevice. And interestingly, interestingly though there is no oxygen, oxygen has depleted in this crevice, but the rest of the part of that particular metallic component has same oxygen level. So, the oxygen reduction will go on on rest of the part and the small that means everywhere cathodic reaction is taking place. So, the everywhere would become now cathode, the only the part which can supply electron now is basically the crevice part, crevice and this crevice part that means in order to do that we have to have this reaction taking place. Okay. So, that means anodic reaction would now preferentially happen in the crevice part and cathodic reaction would happen on the bulk of the metal part. So, that means we have a situation like bulk cathode oxygen reduction and crevice which is small and this is large part large cathode and crevice is a small part becomes preferentially anode to meet this requirement for the oxidation oxygen reduction process there we need electron. Okay. So, that is what this becomes anode and now this is you see is a classic example of galvanic corrosion fine. So, this is the galvanic corrosion and here why galvanic because oxygen reduction happens outer side and iron oxidation happen in the crevice. This is exactly same as the example what we have cited that this is a water droplet the around this area will be cathode and the center part will be anode and this happens when oxygen is depleted at the center part of that particular tiny water droplet. So, this is exactly same as galvanic corrosion, but now that it is not about anything like crevice. So, there is no extraordinary part of crevice here except that thickness of that particular thin slice, thin portion of that crevice where it allows water to seep in, but it does not allow the water to have a convection. So, it is a stagnant liquid so, except that is everything about galvanic corrosion. So, the next class will get into the crevice, the important aspects of crevice which is basically the metal chloride hydrolysis and leading to hydrogen generation, hydrogen ion generation and that hydrogen ion generation would lead to acidity much more that particular crevice portion will become highly acidic and because of the acidic nature even if it is a passivating metal that passivation will be broken. Okay. So, that hydrolysis part metal chloride hydrolysis part and acidity increase of acidity will actually get into the situation where crevice becomes autocatalytic in nature. Okay. So, there it actually comes out of basic galvanic mode to a crevice speciality 
mode. Okay. So, that part we will talk in our next lecture. Thank you.